Welcome to A-Level and AP Physics. In today's lesson, we will discuss a typical type of question on simple harmonic motion from May June 2022, Paper 4, Variant 1. In this question, we will discuss some very important concepts about simple harmonic motion. And those concepts are most frequently asked in past paper questions. In order to get maximum benefit from this video, first of all, pause the video, do the question by yourself, and then check the solution. This is the best way to get maximum benefit from videos. Let's study together. Let's improve together. For our question number four, it is given to us a pendulum consists of a bob means small metal sphere. As you can see here, we have one small metal sphere at the end of the string. And this small metal sphere is called bob attached to the end of a piece of string. The other end of the string is attached to a fixed point. This point is the fixed point. The bob oscillates with small oscillations. Very important point. If angle of oscillation means the angle with vertical, if that angle is less than 15 degrees, it means the motion of this pendulum is simple harmonic motion. So we can use principles of simple harmonic motion about its equilibrium position as shown in figure 4.1. The length L of the pendulum measured from the fixed point to the center of the bob is 1.24. Means L is from the fixed point to the center of this bob and that L is equal to 1.24 meters. For this question, it is also given to us the acceleration A of the bob varies with its displacement X from equilibrium position as shown in figure 4.2. For part A, we need to state how figure 4.2 shows that motion of the pendulum is simple harmonic motion. So we need to understand conditions for simple harmonic motion and then we will apply those conditions to figure 4.2 to find out whether the motion of the pendulum is simple harmonic motion or not. So let's try to understand conditions for simple harmonic motion. Conditions for simple harmonic motion. The first condition is A is directly proportional to minus X. It means that A and X, so simply we can say A and X, they are directly proportional. So one thing we can say from here is directly proportional to minus X. It means A and X are directly proportional. It simply means that when one is increasing, other is also increasing and vice versa is also true. So they are directly proportional. So simply we can say when X is increasing, acceleration will also increase. And when X is decreasing means that this displacement x is the displacement here when displacement is decreasing acceleration will also decrease so this is what a is directly proportional to x is telling us now let's try to understand the significance of this minus sign the minus sign is telling us when a is positive so let me write down here minus sign. This minus sign simply tells us when A is positive, means when A is positive, X has to be negative. And when A is negative, X has to be positive. It simply means that A and X, they have opposite directions. So simply we can say they have opposite directions opposite directions and this one you can also understand with the help of this equation a is equal to minus omega square x so any object which is doing simple harmonic motion they have to satisfy this equation and this is condition for simple harmonic motion and acceleration has to be for simple harmonic motion acceleration has to be directed towards equilibrium so this is also condition for simple harmonic motion so we can say acceleration has to be directed towards equilibrium so these are the conditions for simple harmonic motion now let's try to find out is the motion of this pendulum is simple harmonic motion or not with the help of this figure in this figure you can see first of all a and x a and x they are directly proportional because it's a straight line so this is a straight line through the origin it simply means that they are directly proportional so first thing we can say that as it is a straight line and passing through origin, we can say straight line through origin, it simply means that A is directly proportional to 
x and the gradient of this one is negative negative means that they are in opposite direction so second point you can say as the gradient of this graph is negative it simply means that a and x they have opposite directions so they have opposite directions that's all what you need to write down for this question and this figure 4.2 is satisfying conditions for simple harmonic motion so the motion of this simple pendulum is simple harmonic motion and this question has two marks if you have write on these two points you will get two marks the first mark you will get if you have written straight line through origin and it means that a and x they are directly proportional the second point if you have said negative gradient and negative gradient is telling us that a and x they are in opposite directions you will get the second point and this question has two marks for part b1 we need to use figure 4.2 to determine angular frequency omega of oscillations we have already discussed motion of pendulum is simple harmonic motion and this line is a straight line so we can use equation for simple harmonic motion to link a and x together a is equal to minus omega squared x as this is a straight line we can compare this one with straight line equation means we can say y is equal to mx and in this case m is equal to minus omega squared so simply we can write down in this case gradient is equal to negative omega square or simply we can say in this case omega square is equal to negative of gradient negative of gradient so in order to calculate omega we need to calculate gradient first of all so let's try to calculate gradient of this graph in order to calculate gradient you can take any two points on this straight line i will take one point at origin then the second point i will take here and the coordinates of this point we have zero point zero five comma minus zero point four so we can calculate gradient so in this case we need to write down this is minus zero point four i mean this is y2 minus y1 y1 is equal to zero divided by we have o point this is value of x2 minus x1 so we can solve this one and we can find out value of gradient so in this case value of gradient will be equal to minus 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.05 now we can plug in this value here if we take minus of that we have minus 0 0.4 and this is divided by 0 0.05 so simply we can write on minus will be cancelled with minus so we have 0.4 means you multiply minus with minus you will get positive sign so here we have divided by 0 0.05 then this one is equal to omega square so this is value of omega square but we need to calculate omega so we can write on here omega this one will be equal to 0 0.4 divided by 0 0.05 5 if we take square root on both sides so we will get omega so omega in this case will be equal to 2.8 radians per second up to 2 sf so the answer for this question is 2.8 radians per second this question has two marks you will get the first mark the c mark if you have written omega square is equal to negative of gradient you will get one mark and that is c mark and the second mark you will get if you have got the right answer and this is how marks will be awarded for the second part it is given to us the angular frequency omega is related to the length l of the pendulum by this equation and it is also given to us k is a constant use your answer in b1 to determine k give a unit with your answer so for this question you need to write down the unit and also you need to write down the magnitude of k so first of all let's try to understand how we can calculate k in order to calculate k we can rewrite this equation we can write on omega is equal to square root of k over l now if we square both sides we can write down omega square this one will be equal to k over l from here we can say k will be equal to omega square times l we have already calculated value of omega in part b1 omega was equal to 2.8 2.8 and l is equal to 1.8 
two four. This is given in this question. Now simply we need to multiply. If we multiply this one, our final answer will be nine point seven. Now we need to understand how we can write down the unit. The unit of omega is radian per second. So this is radian per second squared. And the unit of L is meter. So we can write down our final answer in SI units that will be equal to meters per second per second. So using SI base units, our answer is 9.7 meters per second per second. Radian is not SI base unit. So simply we can write down here k is equal to 9.7 and the unit of this one is meters per second per second. And this question has two marks. The first mark you will get if you have written k is equal to omega square l, you will get one mark and that is c mark. And the second mark you will get if you have got the right answer with units, you will get a mark. So this is a mark. For part C, it is given to us while the pendulum is oscillating, the length of the string is increased in such a way that the total energy of the oscillations remains constant. Total energy remains constant. So this is key concept you need to answer this question. Total energy remains constant. For this question, we need to suggest and also we need to explain qualitative effect means we don't need calculations of this change on the amplitude of oscillations. Now, first of all, let's try to understand if the total energy remains constant, what is effect on amplitude? So if you look at this pendulum at this point, the energy of this oscillator is maximum. Means energy at this point, the total energy is equal to kinetic energy maximum. And kinetic energy maximum will be equal to one half m v max, means the maximum speed, v max square. Now we can simply write down here total energy that is equal to kinetic energy maximum kinetic energy maximum and kinetic energy maximum is equal to one half mv max square. But you need to understand maximum speed v max for simple harmonic motion. We need to understand v max is equal to a times omega. A is the amplitude of oscillations. So simply we can replace v with a omega. So we can write down here v max is equal to a omega square. Now if we simplify this we will get one half m a square omega square. Now we need to understand what is the effect of L on omega. So we can rewrite omega square. This is equal to k over L. If L increase, it means omega has to decrease. So it means that omega in this case is decreasing. If omega decrease, it also means that A has to increase, means the amplitude has to increase because 1 by 2 M is constant and total energy of oscillations that is also constant. It simply means that if omega decrease, A has to increase because total energy remains constant. So this is the main concept you need to understand. Now we can also understand this one omega is equal to 2 pi over t. So if omega decrease, time period will increase. So it simply means that before this pendulum was oscillating very fast like this. Now omega has decreased. So time has increased. So it will oscillate slowly. That its amplitude of oscillation will be greater than before. So that's all what you need to write down for this question. So first thing you can say in this case, as L increases, we can say as L increases, omega decreases. As L increases, omega decreases. So this is first thing you can write down. Omega decreases. As omega decreases, amplitude increases. So we can say, so amplitude increases because total energy is constant. So amplitude increases as total energy is constant. As total energy, we can say, remains constant. Or simply you can say, as total energy is constant. So that's all what you need to write down for this question. This question has two marks. You will get the first mark if you have written, as L increases, omega 
decreases you will get one mark and that is a mark mean this has to be in your answer this point has to be in, in your answer then this is the explanation so it has to be in your answer otherwise you will not get any mark for this question and the second mark is answer mark if you have written amplitude increases you will get the second mark and this is answer mark so you have to write down the statement this one is the statement and this one is the explanation so if you write both of them you will get two marks